Welcome to Epic Gen Table Talk. I'm feeling very energized because we're going to be talking about athletics. And later on, we'll be meeting a very special guest who will talk about his recent experience at a national championship event. Before that, let's go talk to my co-hosts to see if they've done any physical activity today. Be honest, guys. Today? Um, <laughs> yes, it is this week. Time. Have you do you do any physical activity? I swim and I do taekwondo. Woo! Whoa! By far the most athletic. So, uh, how about you guys? Do you do anything? Well, I started like exercising kind of like in the summer of this year. Mm. But, like, this week, for some reason, I just haven't been doing it. Relatable. I don't know why. The most I've done today was like walk around my house. Oh, oh okay. It's okay. I'm getting my steps in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, do you, have, do you have that app like, like that does like account. the fitness mm-hmm. things or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're just like, yeah, every step, it's like one, two. <laughs> like mental counting. Yeah, mental, yeah. mental counting, except <laughs> I get lost. Oh. At some point. In your house? Mm. What number are you at? <laughs> no. Yeah, how many steps do you have right now? <laughs> have you been counting? No. <laughs> no. Okay. I've been walking today. At least I wasn't in bed the entire day, so... Mm-hmm. I mean, you're here. I'm not in your bed. More than I can say. More than I can say. Um... Most I've done is dance in my bedroom, cause listening oh. to music. What were you listening to? What about um, you energized? <laughs> what about um, you like, pumped up? Let's pull up my Spotify. No, we already had uh, an episode yeah. for that. It was that one song Kate. I sang, oh. The Cloud Nine. <laughs> Cloud oh, Nine. Oh, Nine. I was there. Yeah. Was that? Funny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> See, like, okay. you know, music can get us pumped up too. Uh-huh. That can motivate me. Yeah. yeah. So motivate like, you, you use music to, to. Do you guys work out or no? Work out. Like oh yeah, you said you do I work do, out. I build up my endurance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, actually, one time I tried like um, way back before in COVID. I feel like COVID made everyone starting working out. So I started working out in COVID, and then I stopped, and then I started again, and then I stopped, and then I started. COVID yeah. Made, COVID. Yeah. 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 So like, it's like a little bit of an on and off thing. Yeah. Is it on or off right now? Okay. It was on, but then we're not going to talk about it's now. Off. Okay. Yeah. That's great to hear. <laughs> but like when I had school and I had gym, that was like the most activity I've been. The most mm-hmm. active I've been. So do you guys like gym in school? Pumped air. It depends. It's okay. Depends? I mean, I depends. try my hardest because my teacher marks participation. Mm. Yeah. I mean, don't they always mark participation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's extra attention if you're just standing around or, like, actually trying to... Yeah. Get, like, in basketball, if you're just, like, like running around aimlessly, then she knows. But if you're trying to actually get the ball, then you'll get, like, points for that. Oh, so she's, like, observing, like, really carefully. Like, yeah. She's, yeah. Okay. she's, like, really staring you down. Like, yeah. Like, oh. doing the activity. Yeah. She's, like... <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like, yeah. um, do you guys, how about the, the beep test? Oh. Oh. I don't, I don't, don't have that at my school. You don't? You don't? Have the beep You're test. so lucky. Yeah. That test. We have written tests, though. So it's kind of strange. We, for for, for a, Yes. yes so what do you mind? write in the test? She makes us study the sport of our unit. Oh. So I mine. did that. I did That's that. Oh, who was the teacher? Um, no, because I'm. I'm in grade, well, I was in grade 8, so oh, you yeah. wouldn't know her. Oh, yeah, I don't know her. But, like, um, we did one time a badminton test, a mm. written one. Let's not talk about my grade. But, um, oh, what, okay. like, <laughs> but what was your favorite sport in doing, like, the, the phys ed? Wait, what do you do in phys ed in elementary? I don't remember. I, well, I, my favorite sport was basketball because mm. Filipino heritage. Of my course. dad like, forced me, he taught me, he made me oh. into the basketball star I am today. You like, are? You. According to my gym teacher, that was the one sport I was like decent at. Oh. Because she made me a team captain once. Oh, so. oh. Okay. Leadership. Leadership. Personally, <laughs> personally, I can't relate. <laughs> what about you guys? Well, I think for, it was really all over. 
oh my god it was so all over the place actually because like we would do like um okay it would either be like ugh, wait <laughs> hold on wait, 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 wait. hold on Whoa, <laughs> we did something thing. with <laughs> this is so bad i can't explain it i don't remember the names because like they pulled up some random ones that i don't remember the names of but it was like with a net what soccer <laughs> 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 no, wait, wait, oh hold on. God. It was like, like you have like a bat, and then like there's a net. baseball, <laughs> a bat, <laughs> a baseball oh, net, uh, t-ball, <laughs> t-ball, t-ball. I think that was one of them. Isn't, isn't See, like, that one where it was cool? It was like net. One of the units was like net wall games, and they uh, made us do like a bunch. That's why that's what that's what I'm trying to talk about. I just don't remember the names of it. So we did like three games in like one period. Huh. And it was so awkward because I had to like pair up with someone I didn't know because I didn't have any friends in that class. <gasps> Damn. Oh my That's God. a little bit of a struggle, but it's okay. We have to put ourselves out there sometimes, so. Yeah. But okay, what about Mani Pacquiao? Do you know? Who doesn't? <laughs> <Mani Pacquiao. laughs> Filipino sport icon, guys. Mm-hmm, Mani Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. Filipino representation. We love We that. love them. But like, you think he's like. Yeah, you know, maybe he's so good because you know when you're shorter, like you're agile, you know. Okay. Like Filipino genes. The logistics. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Did you know Uh, that he came from like the very bottom? So do you guys, and also like in your opinion, like credits to Toastmasters because I saw this in their website, but do you believe that anyone can be a top athlete at any stage in their life? Yeah, of course. It doesn't. It really, the age doesn't really matter. Honestly. If they work for it, if they yeah, work yeah. for it, if they work for it. Because yeah. I know that being an athlete doesn't happen overnight. Like you have to like put in the yeah. work and discipline and like be consistent. Well, you could do but it at any exactly. stage of your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, just as long as you work hard. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You get there. So. That- that just like Money Pacquiao, guys. Just, just like Money Pacquiao. Pacquiao. <laughs> Filipino inspiration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love. Put, put I like love. a poster of him on your wall. Like, oh yeah! Imagine yeah. having like endorsements. Because you're rich, not not because you're because you're good. No, because you're a good athlete, just like money, 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 money. money. Oh. Yeah. Thank so you. I mean, what endorsements has he done though? Do you guys know? I, what? Do you know any endorsements he has done? Let's not talk about that. But he probably has. You know, he's famous and like literally and even rich. Korea knows him. Yeah, you said. Yeah, he was in Bloodhounds, guys. Yeah, some K drama. Really? Yeah, it was a K drama. He was there. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he was mentioned or something. Mm-hmm. Like as so a like, reference. I can tell all of us really love Manny Pacquiao, and love. um, somehow we're unathletic uh, except for Dana Beto. Save for Dana, Dana Beto. But like, <laughs> flexing the muscles. <laughs> what muscles? <laughs> okay, don't worry. Oh yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but like, thanks guys for your opinions and unathleticness. But um, oh, <laughs> I'm joking. But to all our viewers out there. Hang on tight, because when we come back, we'll be talking to a para-athlete and an advocate who (laughs) proves time and time again, time and time again, that you can do anything, no matter your abilities. Right. (laughs) Thank you. Epic Gen Table Talk. Our special guest today has just come back from a successful competition at the 2023 Canadian National Track and Field Championship in Langley, British Columbia, winning gold in discus and silver in shot put in his class. Please welcome amputee, advocate, and Team Ontario multi-time Athletics Ontario and Canadian national medalist, Aristotle Domingo! Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, you know? Oh no, this is awesome. You girls are doing a wonderful job and I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. you. We're excited to have you here today. Well, thank you, thank you. Can we just get a special round of applause and give him a congratulations for his recent win? Thank you. Right here on the table. Yeah, right here. On display. Mm -hmm. So speaking of wins, could you tell us about your experience on, let me just say it again, at the 2023 Canadian National Track and Field Championship? What? Thank you. I, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really great, um, you know, to be representing, you know, your province of Ontario, which is my home, right? 
um, and going to that level of, of competitiveness and, and, and representing in track and field, especially in pair, in a pair mm -hmm. of field or a pair of sport. Um, it's a, I think it's a really great way and, and to, to showcase you know what we do and, and how we achieve things and, and all the hard work that we put in to get to that level. And it's just you know you know the, the first level up to getting to the Paralympics and, and everything else um, you know competition wise around the world. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a really great way and it's a great experience to also see all the competitors around the country. And really, you know, your your competitors on the field, but you're also friends after the, the event. So it's really it's kind of a good reunion you know, for for all of us athletes across the country. Yeah, great. Okay, and then I also have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So before the break, we were talking about how anyone can be an athlete at any stage of their life. Mm -hmm. And I understand before you were interested in sports, but you didn't do it at the level you were at now. So I was just wondering how you became a para athlete. Sure. Um, yeah. And, and to your point, uh, you can become an athlete at any level. And, to, you know, I think you mentioned it earlier about how just putting in the work to do it, you know, and to get started. And for me, um, yes, I was an athlete um, when I was younger. And to your point, playing basketball, because it's a Filipino thing. I think every, every single one of us <laughs> yeah. played basketball. But again, never thought of it as uh, something that, you know, I would pursue in a, at, at this level. Um, I joined the, the Paralympic, or sorry, the, the, the Parasport sort of movement um, after I became an amputee. Um, it was a way for me to, to, one of the goals was to just get social again, you know, to, to find that social unit to, to, to do something. Um, again, meet new people, have friends and all of that. And, um, and, and that's one way of doing it. And then as I think just having that athleticism in you sort of a bug bite kind of happens and you just kind of want to do it and help mm -hmm. see how you go further. Um, that's how it's happened for me anyway. In my running too, I, my first 5K, I just wanted to run for the sake of running. But once I crossed that finish line, you receive that medal at the end, you're like, wow, this is so exhilarating mm -hmm. and I want to do this mm -hmm. again. And so the very first time I competed two years ago or three years ago um, and received my first medal at the provincial level, it was like, oh wow, I really want to do this. And so, yeah. You know, you, you get back in there and you, you train harder and you work harder and, and you get to the national level and hopefully further out, further on. Thank you. Know, the you. Yeah. 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 That's really inspiring to see like your enthusiasm as it goes on. Yeah. yeah. No, and also, I think the work that you do as an advocate is amazing. You've received multiple awards and you've been on posters and magazine covers. Yeah. And you're also very active and you do so much to raise awareness for people with disabilities. So I wanna know, like, what inspired you to be like that and what motivates you to keep going? For me, again, you know, it, it's, it's really funny when I get asked that question because I never meant to, to, to be anything than, than who I am and, and be authentic with myself, right? And it led to a lot of doors opening, really. And, and I think that's important to, to just be authentic and be ourselves. For me, it, I was just trying to find my community uh, one of the hardest things I think, for, you know, in my experience, especially with, with having lost my limbs, um, was finding that community. I didn't know who to turn to. I didn't know who, you know, who my community was. I didn't know how to get support. And so for me, I didn't want anyone else experiencing that loss, right? You've already been dealing with a lot of loss for yourself. Um, and, and, and knowing that experience, you just don't want it to be something that you can help somebody with but you're not going to. And so for me, it was, how can I help my community? How can I you know, help them so that I also feel good about myself uh, doing that and also helping others. And so and that just, again, opened up a whole doors and that's wide open for me to, to represent. And, and, I'm, and I'm thankful and I feel blessed to be representing my community, the disabled community, um, any intersectionality that, that um, I would represent, you know, whether that's the LGBT community, the BIPOC community, the, the Filipino community, the, the para community, or the, the people with disabilities community. It's, it's, it's all just a way to show what we can do uh, uh, as humans and, and, and what we're capable of really. And if we put our, our authenticity into it and, and really be inclusive and, and be aware of everyone else around us, I think it, you know, it unifies us and brings us into this unified community that, that we all wanna have. You know, so that diversity and inclusion and belonging piece kind of comes together when, when we do that for ourselves. And, and again, just thankful of, you know, just being asked to be in a cover of a magazine or, <laughs> or being in a poster somewhere, and, and it's part of my job now, so which is great. 
That's, that's amazing. Real, that's really beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's amazing to hear that you're very enthusiastic about representing your community. And actually, I'd like to switch gears here a little bit. Sure. So we're going to actually, I want to touch on your acting career because mm-hmm. you made an okay. appearance in Picture Perfect Romance, which is a rom-com about moving forward from heartaches in love and life. That's hurtful, but by the way, it's on Amazon Prime. You guys should go watch it. See his amazing acting skills there. Yeah. And it's amazing because again, touching back on your your passion for representing your community, you were able to do that through the movie and you were able to represent the LGBTQ community, the people of color, and also those with disabilities. So I'd like to ask you, how is that important to you and why do you think it's significant to those that you represented in the movie? Right, no, absolutely. I mean, again, you know, going back to the, the conversation about diversity and inclusion and belonging, right? It's, I think we, we're, we're slowly sh- seeing a movement, um, in, you know, in Hollywood really, and in, in anywhere really in media about, you know, including more people into what we see in the mass media. Um, so we're chipping away at it slowly. I think for me, it's very important to show that because we need to normalize people like myself, right? We need to normalize people of color. We need to normalize people with disabilities, and we're we're slowly doing that. Um, so for me, that's the, that's the most important thing. You know, um, I said this quote maybe like three or four years ago, um, and I said, you know, you can't just be inspired by us every four years during the Olympics. We're we're regular people that exist every day. We go to work every day. We have the same challenges like everyone else you know we have gas problems that we have to put in our tanks in in our car you know we have financial problems we have relationship problems so it has to be normalized to someone i think representing in movies or commercials or tv shows or anything like that that i do it's like you see me and it's just i'm just a person that happens to exist in society and so i think that's why it's important it's it's a huge step for us to see ourselves and, and, and hopefully would inspire other people to see themselves in those roles or in those parts or in those things in, in our society, right? I would love it if a child sees me on TV or on a poster or in a magazine and say, oh, there's a person that is just like me. Whether mm-hmm. that's a person with a disability or in my case, an Asian person or Filipino. To see a Filipino on, you know, on TV is like, oh wow, who is that? Because it's so rare, mm-hmm. right? And so, if I can just inspire that one kid to see, oh, I can see myself, then I've done my job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aww. It's so <laughs> great to hear so like that lucky touched my heart. You guys are doing that, you know? So when, when little girls, little Filipino girls see you, look at them, look at how young they are at this table and look at the you know, opinions they're giving out and look at how well they're doing on, on TV. And, and I want to do that, right? The same way we see you know, talking about Manny Pacquiao earlier, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, I want to be that, <laughs> yeah. right? I want to put in the hard work to be that, and you girls are doing that. So, Aww. good Love for you, that. congratulations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You so oh my God. God. That's so sweet. Now, I hate for a conversation to end here, but we do have to take a commercial break. But do not leave yet, because right after this, we are going to be getting up and getting active. here with a Canadian gold medalist, Aristotle Domingo. Aristotle, we've all been eyeing these props you brought with us and they all look so interesting. Could you tell us what each of them does? And it'd be really great if you could let us touch them. Sure, Um, I'm gonna start with uh, the sports that you all uh, kinda called me on on, which is at the track and field championship recently. So I brought my gold medal and my silver medal here as well. Um, so this is the one that, oh, yeah. So here's my uh, gold uh, for shot put. Wow. And that's my silver honor. for discus. So oh, I thought that, you know, I'd get you started with uh, no. it's so cool. Yeah. So I get you guys started oh with, the, uh, with, uh, with shot put. So this is a shot put. It's, it's a metal ball and, and, and I won't tell you how much it weighs, but um, I'll pass it around so you guys get a, a, a sort of a sense of what I throw. Mm-hmm. So we use this for throwing. So it's here you go. Like, I feel like I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, so, so you go like this yeah. and, and you throw it. We're not going to throw it because yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's a very heavy ball. We'll it's break heavy some ball. of the equipment. Oh boy. I know it's heavy. Track and field like taught me this. Week. Oh, okay, yeah. I can barely lift that. <laughs> okay, is it our turn? Is it our turn? <laughs> Don't drop it. 
Patience oh, is a virtue. Oh my god, it's so heavy. I'm sorry. <laughs> she can go first. Asha, you can go. Guys. So go. <laughs> you can do it. Oh, oh together. I do it, do it, do it. Okay. Oh. Something, this is something new. Oh, you're <laughs> sharing. I don't think this is safe. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm so ready actually. for them to drop it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh damn! That's not that bad. Yeah, right. Not Two. Carolyn. Lateral rate. I've never had. This is what we call. You sorry. throw this. Yeah. With one hand. With one yes, hand. Yes, that's right. Damn! How, how, how like far? If you don't as far as that. you like, can. Like, or like, how's the farthest like you think you've gone? Um, so it, it, it's, it varies depending on the class that you're in, right? And so it depends on, the, on where the competition is. It, there's a lot of variance that happens when you throw it, so it's not just like the distance. Mm. It, you know, they, they judge you on how you throw it and where your elbows were and, and everything else. And so it's not just a matter of how, how far you've thrown, it's mm. about everything else that kind of go with, with the technique that you used and, and everything else. And so there's a lot of things that happen in, in, in not just throwing it just the farthest you can. Oh. Yeah. But that, that does count. It does count a lot. But um, um, and th this one is where, um, this is called the discus. And um, it's not as heavy as that one. Um, but that's the one that I do, um, taking home a silver medal. Oh, cool. Mm. It's kind of cute. I don't know why. Cute? <laughs> I mean, is this the, the one you got the bowl? Oh, no, yeah. that's a light oh. screen. Why are you lying right now? Let's get quite a party. <laughs> so that was not too bad. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cute. Yeah, it's like a Not too bad compared yeah. to No. And then because I'm a runner, like I said, um, yeah. and I do road racing, um, I, for my prosthetics, I could run with these, but I just don't because it's not conducive to what I would, you know, exert in, in energy and anything like that. Or And I'd be running really slow. So what I do is I use a running blade. So they're um, kind of like this. Um, so I, I, I replaced the prosthetics I'm wearing now to, to, to put these on and this is what I used to run with. This is made of a carbon fiber um, uh, material and it allows me to run and jog and, and speed up and you know and, and run any road race really that, that I would do. And I've done many road races in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually done one in London as well. And so um, oh. you regularly see me on a lot of road races across Canada and across yeah. Toronto. So yeah. So here's one. London. Two. How does this work? Like London, yeah, London, London, UK. Yeah. Okay. London, UK. Okay. London, UK. Has a specific Like when you run, is it like a spring when oh, it touches the ground? I'm just wondering so the shoe size. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, uh, it, it mimics <laughs> the same foot movement that you would have oh. when you're, when you're running. On so this? your heel toe movement is what I would get is just the 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 tip of my toes. Right. And it, for, it allows me to take off. That's and so And so it allows cool. me to, to so move forward. This part touches forward. the ground? Correct. Okay. Very nice. And then it'll, it'll, it'll propel me forward. Very cool. Do you put shoes on this? You, there are some where you can put shoes on, but these ones actually already have the shoe sole right on them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't, I don't need to do that. But yeah. Is it hard to balance? I don't know, I was so curious about that. It is, that. it's a very interesting question. A lot of people think that you, know, you can just stand on it. Um, you actually cannot stand on it. Yeah, that's what I'm um, If you want to imagine what it's like to stand, the closest I could think of is if you, lay, if you girls go on your tiptoes, and try to do that the whole time. So you won't be able to stand up, see how you're shaking and moving forward. So in order for me to, to, to be able to stand on these, is I have to keep moving back and forth, oh. right? So I just have to keep doing this. Because otherwise you'll fall over. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of surface area here, right? Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll fall right through. Mm -hmm. It's like ice skating. <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of, it's, it's, it's very much a lot of just your toes and, mm -hmm. and, and balancing on, on the ball of your feet. Mm. That must take a lot of skill, honestly. Balance. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of core work, a lot of leg work, a lot of a lot of you know warming up, a lot of stretching, a lot of exercising to make sure that everything kind of works together. Again, it's all that technique, right? It's it's mm. the way that that um, you know about your body and the way you learn about your body to actually propel you forward and and, and do any of these activities. Very cool. Cool. <laughs> Are Thank you, you for sharing? Sorry. Thank you for sharing. Absolutely, no worries. Are you all ready to work out though? Yes, okay, yeah, since, yeah. since you're a runner, mm -hmm. um, can you share with us some your, like your best tips for warm-ups for Sure, running? yeah, I mean, you guys are all dressed for, for, for working out, so let's let's do it. 
So, so I'm just going to show you some, some quick ones. And obviously, you know, I'm not going to be able to show you like the most effective one because you are what we call able bodies. And so you have ankles and knees and I don't, I only have uh, knees. But what you typically do is, you you know, you stretch your calves, you loosen up your ankles. So you do some ankle rotations and some, calf, you know, calf stretches like this, right? So we'll go from, from my experience would be from the hip up, oh. right? <laughs> so what we'll do is, we, of course, we want to warm up with, you know, warming up our hips and so just go side to side. Like that, right? Just a little bit of a side to side movement. Everybody can do that. It's just like mm -hmm. dancing, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> right? And we just want to get our, our heart warming up. So we just want to raise our hands as well. Take a deep breath in, right? And out, right? And then that, that just gets our, 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 our shoulders warmed up too. And, and a little bit of, uh, <laughs> of our heart going. And then we really want to get our heart going before any kind of workouts. So then we can start running on in space or Right, she's like, oh, she has some like, tight shoes. Hold <laughs> on. Right, and then we want to also roll shoulders back. Okay, roll shoulders forward. And then ready for something a bit more tougher? Okay, so we're going to start racing. Oh, oh, oh my god. god. You guys have technical difficulties. <laughs> You can, you, yeah, so if you can't do the, the, the jump part that you're doing now, you could also be just stable on, right? So we just want to get like some hip movement and some, some, some um, glute, glute movements so that we loosen up our hips and, and we loosen up. And then as you can see, I'm kind of getting on a little warmer with my running, you know, yeah. with the breathing and everything. So that means my heart is also warmed up a little bit so that I can just start running at this point. Okay, Aristotle, so just before you go, could I please have your signature? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> We're collecting signatures now, but as he's doing that, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sweating a little bit and my heart is kind of beating a little fast. Thank you so much, Aristotle, for being on our show today and for sharing your story and inspiring us to keep going no matter what. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and hope you guys learned something new. So stay active, keep moving, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of Epic Gen Table Talk. Yippee!